This is a living thing. It's not like rock. It's like a living thing that's, that's moving, almost moving. It's both water and soil, so it's that mixture that other places, other surface areas aren't. And it's a bit like looking at a forest when you fly over the top of it. It's like a forest in miniature. It's a murky world. The public perception of bobs is that they're just wet, muddy, horrible places, like from films. People getting lost on bogs in the fog and then, you know, the potential of just being stuck in one. And uh, they're not like that at all. <laughs> they can be really beautiful with all their different coloured mosses and different creatures that live on them. And they've got so many superpowers, if you like. They're just, they're just lovely places. They're kind of like the underdog of the habitat worlds. <laughs> In the UK, bogs are mainly formed from sphagnum mosses or bog mosses. So we've got a sphagnum here, um, and they are the main peat forming species, if you like. And sphagnums are amazing because um, the cells within them can hold loads of water. And that alleviates flooding downhill from the upland peatlands, but also in the lowlands, so for example the fens, they've got quite a big capacity to hold flood water as well. Um, but because of the slightly acidic conditions, those bog mosses don't fully rot or degrade, so they're then stored as like a carbon-rich soil. Here's peat here, look. There it is. Very black organic matter. And it only grows really, really slowly, about one millimetre a year. So if you're looking at a metre of peat, that's like a thousand years worth of, of growth. So it's super, super slow. This is my trusty peat probe. OK. And then we'll measure the depth of the peat. So if I pull that out, you can see how deep the peat is. So this is two metres, so it's, it's about two metres deep. This bog has probably been here probably about 10,000 years, if not long, a little bit longer, but it's not been forming any peat for quite some time. Historically, bogs have been seen of no value at all. And historically, the policy towards bogs has been to drain them, try and get all the water out of them so they can be improved. Whereas the exact opposite is true, we shouldn't be doing that at all. And in fact, we're now realising we should be protecting bogs and protecting peatland because they're so valuable as they are. If you don't think deeply about it, you sort of accept that there's a lot of erosion going along. You know, you see a lot of uh, peat really sort of being worn, worn away. And then you see these huge, what they call peat, peat hags, and you think, crikey, you know, how much has the land dropped and been eroded? So this was a peat hag. Basically, the angle's been flattened off and it's been covered in vegetation. And if you, if you came back here in a year or two, you wouldn't notice that diggers had been here. So there used to be a grip or a ditch that had been dug through the peat to drain the surrounding land. Um, and what they've done is the diggers have come along and they've filled in that ditch with peat and they've created a dam here. And that will help re-wet the peat and then what we'll get in the pool here, we'll get lots of vegetation starting to grow in the water. And then we'll get dragonfly moving in and frogs and loads of things making use of this nice little boggy pool. It 
what would you say is the biggest advantage to restoring a peak? Carbon at the moment. The biggest thing is carbon. I think in Congre it's estimated, even though we have a lot of forests and lots of trees, I think it's estimated about five times as much carbon is locked into the peat as is locked into, into trees. It's a very, very useful resource, an invaluable resource for protecting us from even worse climate change than we're currently experiencing. They're the second biggest carbon store on the planet after oceans and they are actually the biggest terrestrial carbon store on the planet, but also um, an unhealthy peatland or a drained peatland gives off carbon dioxide. So not only will it lose that carbon store, it will also give off or emit carbon dioxide. Basically peat is, is um, a great depth of decomposing and semi-decomposing vegetation because the ground is waterlogged, it's a bog and that means things decay very, very slowly. So it becomes a, a reservoir, really, which maintains and traps carbon in the ground. As soon as they become dry, then sphagnum moss doesn't do well, um, and the peat oxidises, and it gives out carbon dioxide. And that's because it's a, it's a chemical reaction, but also all the microbes that will live in the oxidised peat, start decomposing all the vegetation. And then there's actual physical loss of carbon um, from water and physical erosion. I've always been concerned about the environment and uh, the humans' impact on the environment. So it's really important to me that I can contribute in some way to help alleviate that. If you don't protect it, we'll lose it. I think we have a responsibility as custodians of this planet to do whatever we can to maintain that for the future and resist and reverse wherever we can the effects of climate change. And you know, I want to be able to have my grandchildren, and my children to have the same experience I'm having and being able to walk through this sort of environment and get lost in cloud like this. You know, I'm thinking, what kind of ancestor do I want to be, given that the climate is breaking down even faster than we originally thought? And there is just so much that needs to be done. Peat is such an important resource in relation to carbon capture. It's only 3% of the land surface, but it actually holds 30%, almost 30% of the carbon, which is twice as much as trees. And we all love planting trees and, you know, that's great, but we need to do all of these things if we're going to have any chance of mitigating what's happening. By the contractors doing this work and us all working together in partnership, we've started the bog and the peatland on its road to recovery, but it's not going to be a quick fix. So it's unlikely in my lifetime that it's going to be hugely, you know, fixed if you like. It's going to take years and years and years. Um, and it needs to be continually tweaked and continually worked on. I'd love to hear that after we've gone, tens, hundreds of years time, that the bog is still here, it's wet, it's still growing, and there's all sorts of new wildlife yeah. and um, like dragonflies, frogs, the curlew, the frogs are at back and it's living it's you know it's living and growing for the next generation after yeah. generation that's all we need we don't yeah. Yeah, we don't need anything else other than to know it's growing <laughs>